everybody, it is your girl Jade Ashley and I want to welcome you back to yet another video of the Beat Drops and like always you know I'm here to give you my 5 hottest beats and music of this week so you know you have to stay tuned for more. Okay guys, so let's dive into this week's beats. So my first beat of this week, this was pretty big news that I kind of like woke up to Monday morning and I was really excited about that and that happens to be Pusha T being named the new president of Good music now this was something that was not you know seen by everyone no one seen this coming you know i feel like good music as a label if they've been like pretty pretty low to the point that you actually forget i'm not gonna lie that you would forget that a good music you know actually exists but it was announced Monday exclusively by Billboard magazine that Pusha T was named the new president of Good Music. And I feel that that is a, a good, you know, a good type of move because not to say that Kanye is not about his music because we know Kanye is about his music. But now, you know, Kanye, he's, you know into fashion you know he got his Yeezys that everybody's you know worried about he's like a husband to Kim Kardashian so you know he's associated with all the Kardashians he's a dad like I just feel like Kanye has too much going on to kind of you know be and Kanye he's like the creator so I, technically I don't even know who was like the previous president but you know we all look at Kanye as like the head of good music but I feel like everything that Kanye has going on he cannot put his all into his artists and like the music like you know something it's the good music they needed this change and I feel like Pusha T was definitely a good candidate and Kanye obviously thought that Pusha T was a good candidate because Pusha actually said that one time he was um he received a call from Kanye and Kanye you know said to him like what do you think about being like the president and stuff like that so you know I think it was a good move from Kanye to you know name Pusha T the president of good music and Pusha actually talked to Billboard about the whole you know ordeal and how it all came about and basically he was saying you know why why Kanye decided to name him the president and he revealed that it was like a four month you know type of process so when he said okay so why did Kanye you know name you the president or wanted you to be the president of the music he said he basically just won he just he he was basically just like to manicure the label make it profitable be more very business oriented about it going forward in a manufactured type of way and you know pushing he continued by saying I always look at it as at, I always look at it as an opportunity to help the team and I think that artistically me and Kanye have the same vision he respects me as an artist a really manicured artist so I think it's really good and when the news kind of broke and stuff like that you know it was like a mixture of you know responses to Pusha's new title but for the most part a lot of people was happy about it you know they kind of named him as one of the underrated artists one of the one of the most underrated rappers and stuff like that and I pretty much agree with that. I feel like there's a lot of artists on good music that is underrated. You guys know how many times I talked about how I feel like Tiana Taylor doesn't get the, you know, the recognition that she deserves as an artist because this girl can freaking blow. And, you know, it's been like a year since, like, her debut album came out last year. And then, you know, she had a mixtape come out. We all know Big Sean, but still, I feel like it's some type of underratedness. I don't know if that's a word going on with Big Sean and stuff like that, you know. But I feel like he's definitely, if it was like popularity contest, Big Sean would probably be, probably be the most popular artist on good music. But when you like go outside of like the whole good music umbrella and stuff like that, I still kind of feel like Big Sean is a little bit underrated as well, especially like as a lyricist. So, I mean, I think it's pretty dope. I mean, I feel like Pusha as a president, he will kind of like, you know, bring his hunger as an artist to help kind of push forth the popularity of the artist that's with under the label. And I'm sure it's like more artists under the label that we don't even know about. I think, um, 
I think John Legend is still like good music if I'm not mistaken and I know Common was good music but he's not good music anymore so congratulations to Pusha I mean other than you know the announcement we made that he was president they kind of asked him about you know certain things so one of the things that they asked him about was his Keep Push album and you know when you take on a role such as president of a label you know you probably would think oh you know He's president of a label now, so now his music is going to kind of like slow down or people have been already waiting for like the King Push album to like kind of come out. But he revealed that he actually has been working on the album for a minute now. So he was saying before the year is over that we should be getting some new music from him. That's one. And then another thing that a lot of people have been kind of like, you know, worrying about or kind of like curious about is if that Crew Summer 2 was going to come out because the first Crew Summer album that came out was just like so big and so dope so everybody wanted to know like is the label going to come out with like a follow up and he definitely said that he's working to get any you know producers and stuff like that to kind of like make it happen it's definitely going to happen so this is like a new beginning for good music that I'm kind of excited about I'm excited to see like what having Pusha T as the president of the label will bring. Like, I'm hoping that it will bring more popularity to the label. I'm hoping that more of the artists will get the, you know, the recognition that they deserve because Good Music is a label where they definitely, when it comes to rappers, has the lyricism, like the storytelling, like it just flows well. And then, you know, only the only and i could be wrong but the only singer i know as of right now that's on good mus music is tiana taylor and i've already you know expressed in previous videos how i feel about her being underrated as a singer but we will move on to my second beat of this week and um kind of keeping it's not about good music but you know <laughs> it just is a good segue <laughs> Because I want to talk about Tiana Taylor. You know, we went to talking about her label having a new president. And I'm going to have to talk about Tiana. Just her. And what I'm actually wanting to talk about is her now being engaged. Like, she is the future Mrs. Shumpert. Like, I think from the minute that her and Iman had got together. First of all, I knew they were together before they like made the official announcement because I'm low key creepy and I have both of them on like Instagram and stuff like that. So like when I remember, I think they were like on a, um, like some, like a Hawaiian vacation or something like that, like last summer I remember. And like, I would like piece the backgrounds together and I was like, son, Tiana, and Iman, and at the time, you know, Iman was still like on the Knicks and stuff like that. So, you know, it just, it just, it just gelled well together. So when they like finally announced, this was something that I was excited about. I liked him as like a player and like, I thought his personality was cool. You know, Tiana, she's like a dope girl. So I just felt like them together was just awesome. And then as we all know, they do have a baby girl on the way. So recently they had their, um, baby shower in Cleveland and they had like this whole you know royal family type of theme to go to baby shower and Iman proposed to her at the baby shower and I was just so excited and then I know with anything that happens you know there's like so much backlash <laughs> within the world or people always have their opinion about situations so a lot of people kind of feel that oh the whole proposing at a baby shower thing is just like so whack and corny like you have to basically get somebody pregnant to want them to be your wife but honestly I don't feel like is what that whole situation like that that's not the whole case whatever with the situation with Iman and Tiana because honestly I feel like had she not been pregnant they might have you know eventually made that way to you know possibly being engaged and getting married and stuff like that but it's just something about their relationship that's just so authentic like I don't know like you know how some relationships out here you feel like it's just for show it's just for fun and stuff and it's just something funny about their relationship like they are just them like I don't know them personally but like, you know they just don't care like they be ratchet together they have you know just fun together they like love on each other I have they have like a joint snapchat so I love when they like post on snapchat and stuff like that like they're just so cute like it's a real genuine relationship relationship so I feel like the whole her you know 
being pregnant and you know having a child meant to be the whole marriage thing it's just something about their relationship that i just love so i'm happy for them so congratulations to tiana and iman you know you guys already had the baby girl on the way and now you will be the future mrs shumpert and what i love about her ring is that it's not like me personally if i ever get married i i want the diamond but you know tiana she's always been different so she has like a like a ruby like her engagement ring is like a ruby so it's pretty dope it's pretty cool once again congratulations to iman and see Anna, I'm so happy for you guys and I cannot wait for her to have a baby girl. Like I'm gonna meet the child. Like I don't even know them. Like that's my problem right now. I don't even know these people, but I'm just so happy for them. So yeah. Other than that, we will move on to my third beat of this week. And um my third beat of this week, I wanna talk about um Tamar Raxton. So if you guys have been under a rock well, you know, you gotta have to be under a rock. Cause technically, y'all watching this video to get like information and get my view on certain things. But anyway, so Tamar Braxton this week she had to unfortunately quit Dancing with the Stars. It was reported this week that she had been battling with a dose pneumonia, and you know, she kind of fought through it. Like she just, you know, she she was sick, and you know, she forced herself to do what she had to do, and. Unfortunately, while she was rehearsing for Dancing with the Stars, it became too much, and she was rushed to the hospital, and a lot of people was like, oh, you know, if she doesn't appear on this week's, you know, show for Dancing with the Stars, you know, she's going to be eliminated, but being the trooper that she is, she fought through it, and, you know, she appeared for the, um, the group dance, and we thought, okay, you know, all right, Tamar seems to be better. But then she had to take to her social media to announce that she actually had to quit the competition because it's just too much. So she took to her Instagram she said, With a heavy heart, I have to regret to inform you that my season of Dancing with the Stars has come to an end. Along with the rest of my tour dates with Kim. She was also on tour. And um, after yesterday's final Dancing with the Stars performance, I went back to the hospital after doctors didn't want me to leave in the first place, only to find out that I don't have pneumonia, but something way serious and that is having several, se several PEs, blood clots in both sides of her lungs. As you all know, I will be the first to always encourage anyone to push through any obstacle that comes along one's way. But in this case, my health is my current obstacle. And in true Tay Martian form, I must go about the exact same way as I would anything else. I woke up to a mirror and saw myself this morning and that makes me a winner because that almost wasn't the case. Take care of yourself. I love you all and thank you all for your support. P.S. Big hugs and kisses to my boo Val for being beyond, beyond a friend, brother, and the best partner ever. So this was something I was actually very afraid of happening and I did not want to happen. If you guys can actually go back to the, I don't know what number we're going to be dropped today, but just go and look at the titles and stuff like that. And I talked about when Tamar announced that she was on Dancing with the, Star, Dancing with the Stars and I was so happy for her, but at the same time I was worried because, you know, Tamar has so much on her plate. At the time, her album didn't come out, but she was starting Dancing with the Stars. Probably like two weeks after that, her album came out. We all know that she is a host on the rail. You know, she does reality reality television. Like, she was just doing so much. And one thing that I was afraid of was that she was going to kind of like get burnt out. And, you know, unfortunately with everything that she was doing, you know, it kind of you know burnt her out basically like now she has like blood clots in her lungs and that is something that's definitely serious blood clots has been the cause of some people's deaths so when it gets that serious you just have to stop so i just want to wish tamar a speedy recovery but i also want to say to tamar that i am so 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 proud of you like i said before that i don't even watch dancing with the stars but when she was on the show and she was killing it like I watched Dancing with the Stars just just for Tamar, just to, you know, she she just did such an amazing job and this was like each week she came back and he was like, I know Tamar I'm gonna kill it. And you know, people who, you know, watch Dancing with the Stars like religiously and you know, they sit there and they make their predictions about, oh, who they think is gonna win. And you know, sometimes these people do win. And a lot of people was eyeing Tamar to definitely be the person to take home the disco ball. 
I think that's what the trophy is, like a disco ball or something like that. So I'm just so proud of her, like for her to juggle Dancing with the Stars and like she could have gone and Dancing with the Stars, did a crappy job and been off within like the first two to three weeks. But the fact of the matter is she appeared on it. But no, she appeared on the show, she fought through to better herself as a dancer. So she was a bomb ass dancer on Dancing with the Stars. So I here had this bomb ass album that I still listening to to this day she would sit here and she would have herself appear on the rail and it's some episodes she didn't appear on obviously because she was too busy so she would have you know people like fill in for her but for the most part she was on the rail and then um on tour like she like she said she had to get to her tour date she was on tour with kim but aside from that she was also doing tour dates with mary j blige as well so for her to be on two different tours for her to you know be on dancing with the stars doing her um her talk show and a new a new season of tamar event starts december 10th so it's like she was doing so so much and i'm sure like that's everyone's dream like we just want to do what we love plus more but you know but once again tamar i'm really hoping that you get well soon i am so 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 proud of you as a fan like i love you so once again get well soon and we will move on to my next beat of this week and my next beat of this week i have to talk about ray shrimmer i don't i know i had a ray shrimmer song um as a song of the week a while ago you know this song this could be us that was my song when the video came out i made the song that song my song of the week you know ray shimmer those are one of like one of the artists that is out right now that you know they music i definitely turn up to you know you know, I had to throw my little southern accent that I definitely turn up to. I love me some Ray Shrimmer. So, but anyway, Ray Shrimmer, they are hosting their first annual Shrimp Fest. You know, usually around this time of the year, you know, music festivals are done with. You know, it's November, you know, end of the year, it's holiday season. Nobody really has festivals. So festivals are something for like the springtime, summertime, and stuff like that. But Ray Shrimmer, they will be hosting the first ever shrimp fest in their hometown and i'm hoping i'm pronouncing it properly it's either to to Tupelo, Tupelo, Mississippi. I think that's how you say it. Tupelo, Mississippi, their hometown. And it will take place on December 18th to December 20th. And the first day of festivities, Friday, December 18th, they will have a celebrity basketball game. Um, the night of December, Saturday, December 19th, they will have a concert. And some of the performers that um, are on the list to perform is Yo Gotti, Dej Loaf, K Camp, Michael Made It, and a few other artists. I think I don't know if they're like local artists, but I've never heard of them. And um, Ray Sherman, of course. And while they'll be on stage Saturday night, they will receive the key to the city. And then <laughs> Sunday, December 20th, will be a community barbecue where they will also have like a food drive and a toy drive, you know, like they're giving back to their community and stuff like that. And I think that's like, you know, so dope. For, first of all, for them to like be so young and, you know, it's still pretty much early on in their career. But even with the success that they have been experiencing with their music so far, because, you know, they're only still on number one, like their first album and stuff like that. Not to say that just because you're on one album, you can't give back. But, you know, they're giving back in such a pretty big way with like their whole, you know, they created like this whole festival. So, like, not only are they like providing like, you know, the physicals, whether it's like food and stuff like that. But also like they're providing entertainment and then they're bringing like big names such as Yo Gotti and Dave Loaf and Kate Camp and stuff like that to the hometown. So I think it's pretty dope. So shout outs to Ray Shrimmer, you know, and I think they're like the perfect, you, you know, um, the perfect kind of artist to kind of like develop like their own um, festival and stuff like that. Because if you ever seen them perform before, <laughs> you know, they turn up on stage that um. 
I forgot, I think it was at the Governor's Ball or something like that this year, and Slim Jimmy, he jumped off the stage, and I think he, like, jumped into a speaker, and he messed up his leg and stuff, so, but you know, they kind of, they, they turn, so I feel like they are definitely the proper artists to do something such as have their own music festival, so yeah, once again, Shrem Life Festival goes down December 18th to December 20th in Tupelo, I hope I'm saying that right, Mississippi, so yeah, but moving on to my last beat of this week, I, uh, y'all should know for a fact that this was about to be a beat this week, and I am referencing Miss Missy Elliott, Miss Miss Demeanor. Oh my God! So Miss Elliott, Miss Elliott. Oh gosh, I had a um a, a sixth grade teacher named Miss Elliott, but Missy Elliott, she came out with a new music video this week, and I am so 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 here for it like I was just so happy to see her you know come back like she's kind of been like on the comeback tip a little bit you know I think um was it it was I think it was this year's um Super Bowl performance the Katy Perry right Katy Perry was this year I'm sure because I think last year was Bruno Mars so Katy Perry you know she had Missy Elliott you know come join her on the stage at the Super Bowl this year for the halftime show and you know not to say that that kind of boosted Missy to like you know come back out but you know everybody was like oh shit Missy like she still got it and stuff like that and then I know she had um like two singles come out I think before that but those were the singles that like really hit or whatever but now she has her new single, WTF, and that does not stand for what the f it stands for where they from. So, and that features Pharrell Williams. And this music video goes down for a fact, or I feel like can definitely go down as one of those classic Missy Elliott videos. Like, I feel like, I feel like the video makes the song better when you listen to it. But we all know Missy Elliott for having like those epic 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 music videos and she brought it like she brought classy missy classy classic missy elliott in 2015 she had the um it was like the little puppets and stuff like that it was like the pharrell puppet the missy elliott puppet and then like the puppet dancer with like the puppets um she had like this whole little rhinestone look type thing like and then she had you know face like Everything about that video gave me the Missy that we all know, like we've all grown to love throughout the years. So I was just so happy for her return. I'm like, now nah, this right here, this right here, this is how you do it. And what I love about it, and I say this about a lot of you know artists that kind of like come back out, is that I love when they stay true to who they are and they don't try to you know be so different to the point that they feel like they have to connect with this generation and change who they are and do something that's like so out of the box so missy she definitely remained the missy we love and she brought it and i feel like a lot of people respect that and a lot of people was talking about this music video so if you guys actually want to check out the music video in its entirety you can head over to my blog at www.jade-ashley94.blogspot.com and those are my five hot beats of this week Okay guys, so I want to thank you for tuning in to this week's video. And like always, you know, I have to remind you guys to comment, like, subscribe, and share. It would greatly, greatly be appreciated. Unfortunately, I have no notes to leave you guys with this week. But you know I have to leave you with my song of the week. And in honor of my, you know, I was like the third beat or something like that, Ray Shrimmer, I decided that I wanted their song, Come Get Her, to be my song of the week. When I tell you guys that is my song, you know, I have my ratchet moments and that's just my song when I'll be like, oh, somebody come get her. She's dancing like a stripper. So I said, okay, they're doing a great thing in their community. They got their whole shrimp fest going on next month. So I was like, I'm going to give my song of the week to Ray Shrimmer. And right now my favorite song is Come Get Her. So they have that. If you guys have not seen the video, heard the song, I don't know where you've been. But if you want to check it out, you can head over to my blog at www.jade-ashley94.blogspot.com. Once again, I thank you for tuning in and I will see you all next time. So bye. 
Hey guys, thank you for watching and don't forget to share and subscribe and I will see you all next time.